So, in the last class, we discussed the concept of uh, the center of mass that is associated with the system of particles and rigid bodies. And we had also seen a few illustrations and examples as to how to calculate this center of mass. Some of the problems were straightforward and uh, a particular problem where there was a continuous mass distribution was involved, we had to make use of the an integration. And so, please do not be scared of using mathematical techniques while solving physical problems. Before we move on to today's topic, it is very instructive to work out a problem which was discussed in the last class which was uh, sort of left in the middle. This problem is like this. So, we had uh, four masses, we had four masses which were distributed along the vertices at the vertices sorry of a square. This is x axis, this is y axis and uh, here it is 1 kilo, the vertex is uh, minus 1 comma 1 and uh, this here it is 2 kilos at this point at this vertex and this is 1 1 and here it is again 1 kilo and its vertex is uh, x 1 and y minus 1 and at this vertex it is 2 kilograms and it is minus 1 comma minus 1. This problem we did. So, just for the sake of uh, uh, what I can say recalling, remember when I write a coordinate as 1 comma 1, this actually means a vector 1 times i plus 1 times j, which is uh, this is same as i plus j. And sometimes unit vectors are also denoted as uh, in this way, i is denoted as e x times 1 plus 1 times unit vector along y direction, therefore, e x plus e y. See both are same. So, when you see a different notation, when you see a different notation you should not get uh, confused, both these notations are used. We did this problem and then we got the center of mass as uh, uh, or center of mass as 0 comma 0. That means, it is at the origin. This problem was after that we changed the problem. The changed problem is like this. Suppose, it is a lamina. This is the second one where the 2 kilo the this is the this is the this this portion has 2 kilograms as weight and this this portion has 1 kilogram as weight, but it is a lamina of uniform thickness. Okay. This is 2 kilograms, this is 1 kilogram, this is 1 kilogram. So, we want to calculate the center of mass of this system. Remember the center of mass of this is, so it is 2 kilograms the center of mass of this lamina portion, remember it is a uniform lamina. So, by symmetry considerations and geometry, the center of mass would be located here. What are the coordinates? Drop the x axis half and y coordinate is going to be this half. Right. Similarly, the center of mass of this system would be from here it is half and if I drop here it will be minus half. Right. So, let me write here it is 2 kilograms. So, the center of mass of this is minus half comma minus half, this is 1 kilogram mass lamina, the center of mass would be minus half comma half. So, you can check up whether you have done the calculations correctly. Now, the center of mass of this system is equal to 
So, this whole mass is represented by this particular point that is where this 2 kilograms is concentrated. So, it will be 2 into half comma half right plus we come here it is 1 kilogram into it is located at this particular vector plus here it is 2 kilograms 2 into minus half comma minus half plus 1 kilogram sorry it is 1 kilogram which is placed at the center of this uh, squarish lamina right that is what the center of mass of each of this. Okay. This whole thing divided by mass this is 1 3 6 kilograms. Now, you can see that what is going to happen this is half this is minus half plus half minus half similarly half minus half will cancel and then you have minus half with plus half therefore, this is again you get the answer as the origin. Okay, origin is the center of mass. See please do not be under impression in any problem where you are required to calculate center of mass it is going to be the origin. Okay. I have chosen it for the sake of convenience. So, for example, if I am going to have 1 kilogram here and then 2 kilogram here obviously, you will see that with respect to the mass distribution there is less mass on this portion 1 plus 1 2 kilograms on this side there is more mass it is 4 kilograms. Obviously, when you calculate the center of mass of the system will shift from the origin to the right and okay. so that you need to be careful. Now, we will move on to the today's portion after having introduced the concept of uh, center of mass yesterday. Now, we have to move on to other topics like uh, what about the motion of center of mass, how does it move? This is something similar to the one dimensional problems and two dimensional problems which we had discussed earlier on a motion on a plane that is one thing and important concepts like uh, linear momentum, momentum conservation etcetera, etcetera we have to deal. So, you can see that there is a, with respect to the development of the subject there are close parallels between uh, what you have studied in kinematic, kinetics, kinematics in 1 and 2 dimensions and now and right and now we shall proceed to study the uh, this, uh, such systems. So, just for the sake of convenience we will write the center of mass of a system the you have you have particles m 1 at r 1 and this is another mass m 2 which is at a position at a r 2 etcetera and then I have here r n this is e m n. Then the center of mass of the system is given by which we had seen if you want to write uh, this is r c m also you can write just for our reference z equal to what is that do? So, each mass is multiplied by its corresponding position vector and this summation by m i, i running from 1 to n. Here, since we have little n number of particles, and okay. so this is same as if total mass is m i running from 1 to little n m i r i divided by capital M, where I can say that m 1 plus m 2 m n is capital M is total mass of the system of particles. So, uh, so what do we do? This we can write it as I can uh, bring the m to this side I have m times r is equal to m 1 r 1 plus m 2 r 2 vector r 2 rather plus m sub n times r n vector. Now, what I do I differentiate on both this looks like a momentum conservation 
this is what some of the momenta on the of uh, all the particles. So, each momenta is being multiplied by and this is nothing but uh, this also represents the momentum of center of mass of total mass m rather. Okay. Now, I will differentiate on both sides with respect to time. Let us remember that the masses are not changing in time and so masses are all constants in time, constant masses and therefore, differentiate with respect to differentiate with respect to time on both sides. Remember the particles are going to move, masses are not going to change. Therefore, the position vectors of these particles are all functions of time. Therefore, there is meaning in talking about differentiating the positions vector with the position vectors with respect to time. So, what do we get? m into dr by dt is equal to m 1 dr 1 vector by dt plus m 2 times dr 2 vector by dt etcetera all the way up to m sub n dr n vector by dt. So, we know that what is this dr 1 by dt is nothing but the velocity vector of the first particle. Similarly, this is this quantity dr 2 by dt is the velocity vector of the second particle. Therefore, I can write m into velocity vector I will call by little v 1 m 1 plus m 2 times v 2 etcetera plus m sub n v n. Now, this dr by dt I will call it as capital R capital V sorry. So, this is now what it means this is the velocity of center of mass the whole the whole mass is uh, the all these masses are represented by capital M. Therefore, this V is the center of mass velocity. So, V is we will write here. Uh, so, here V is the velocity of center of mass. Okay. So, <coughs> so velocity of the center of uh, this is the expression for the velocity of center of mass. So, if you want we can bring this m here and have a nice expression this is good enough. Now, what I will do we will again uh, differentiate this with respect to time because velocities also keep changing therefore, m into we will call this as uh, <coughs> Okay, is equal to m one a one plus m two a two etcetera plus m n a n, where a is what? It is the acceleration of the center of mass. Therefore, it is dv by dt and a sub n is the acceleration vector of the nth particle therefore, it is given by d v n by d t. So, so far so good uh, of the ith particle I can do y only doing for the nth particle. Okay. Now, this is same as m into a is equal to what is m 1 into a 1 that is the force external force that is acting on the first particle that is the exactly the force term which is responsible for causing an acceleration of a 1 on the first particle. Therefore, it is f 1 plus this is second is f 2 force plus f sub n. So, what is what does it mean the vector sum of forces acting on the particles is exactly equal to the mass of the system of particles multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass. So, this is mass of this uh, the center of mass 
times the acceleration of center of mass is equal to all the external forces acting on the system. So, this is you call it as uh, you call this term as force external, this you call this as force external. And, uh, so, the center of mass of a system of particles moves as if the entire mass of the system is concentrated at the center of mass and all the forces were all the external forces were applied at that particular point. So, what you have is this uh, situation, let us say that uh, we have here a scenario, this is uh, this is what we uh, maybe I can use the same diagram. Uh, okay. So, this is m 1 here, m 2 here, uh, m i here etcetera. Right? So, external forces are acting on it, various external forces acting on is f 1 here, this is f 2 here, I am not denoting the actual force vectors. Now, the whole picture can be replaced by the center of, let us say the center of mass of the system by a different colored chalk I have here. So, this is the center of mass. So, all these white dots can be sort of replaced by this m and it is going to move uh, and it is going to move with an acceleration uh, a, I will denote it by a here. So, all these particles and the external force acting on it can be replaced by simply this particular one, uh, center of mass moving with an acceleration a, this is a very nice uh, way of looking at things. And, uh, Okay. Now, this is the governing equation rather m into a is equal to f external. We will explain in a moment what are the external forces, this is the sort of governing equation. This is the what you call it as the uh, governing equation for a system of particles. On one hand you have forces, external forces each force will cause an acceleration on the left hand side you have the whole scenario can be replaced by one uh, mass namely capital M and it is moving with an acceleration capital A and uh, we have specifically used the term f x f sub external what do you mean by external sir and, uh, forces are divided into uh, forces can be divided into we will come over here. So, right now the kind of problems you are dealing with where the forces are involved they are divided into external forces external forces external and another one is internal. What are external forces? For example, we have let us say several particles of masses m 1, m 2 etcetera, they are all falling under gravity. So, gravity is the external force, it does not take into account the kind of interaction between the different particles and uh, again suppose I have some charges, I place these charges in an electric field or a magnetic field, this, this, so these fields will in turn cause uh, uh, some forces, these forces will make these charges move in a particular way, this is external forces right. You know that a charged particle moving in an electric and magnetic field, it is given by the so called uh, the Lorentz force term and uh, so these are external forces. What are internal forces? Internal forces are something like tension, tension in a string, compression, torsion, shear and uh, Suppose, I take in a gas, the van der Waals gas etcetera, there is a kind of attraction or a repulsion at uh, various orders of length, these are all uh, internal forces. These internal forces largely they, they do not contribute, they do not contribute for the dynamics of the system, rather they contribute for structure, how the whole system is going to look like, what kind of structure it will form. And, uh, so, generally external forces are uh, what one calls them as uh, low applied loads, this is a terminology which is generally used. And 
Now, uh, we will move on to the next concept, the linear momentum of a system of particles and right. Momentum of a particle, linear momentum of a system of particles. Right. So, we know the basic definition of a momentum. If a particle is moving with a velocity v, then its momentum is given by m times v and, and uh, a Newton's second law is stated in this uh, very familiar form. The rate of change of momentum is what we call it as force or the other way you want to write, force is defined as the rate of change of momentum. Uh, okay. So, the linear momentum of a system of particles is already defined as capital P, which is same as m into v. Remember, this is the terminology I guess we have used it here in this equation. In fact, this equation is uh, momentum conservation, this equation represents the momentum conservation. Just for the sake of clarity, again I am writing, this is nothing but m 1 v 1 is p 1 vector plus p 2 vector plus p n vector. Right. Okay. So, the total momentum of a system of particles is equal to the product of the uh, total mass of the system and the velocity of center of mass. So, uh, I had uh, said it earlier, the picture of that n individual particles each with a particular mass moving can be replaced by the motion of the center of mass and it has got a mass. The center of the mass of the, uh, the center of mass is capital M, sum of all the masses and right. And, okay. Now, what happens if external force is 0? If there are no external forces. So, from this equation I can write, from this equation I can get d p by d t this is the so called equation of motion for the center of mass. Now, we can get uh, very relevant and useful information from this. Suppose, suppose f external is 0, there are no external forces acting on the system, then what will happen? Then automatically dp by dt is equal to 0. this implies p is equal to some constant vector. So, this means the this means what the <coughs> this means that the linear momentum of the system remains the same this means This means the linear momentum of the system of particles remains the same as time progresses. And, okay. This is what you call it as a moment, linear momentum is a constant of motion. So, this implies for a system of particles which are not subjected to external forces, the center of mass moves such that the, the linear momentum capital P is a constant of motion.
in a technical language you say that the, the capital P is conserved, it is a technical language better you learn this that means it remains the same. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens this? Now, P is same as mass times V, therefore, therefore the velocity of the center of mass remains constant, this remains that the velocity of center of mass remains constant. That means, it is not going to change its direction, because it is a vector quantity. And this is true only if there are no external forces acting on this system. And we will consider an illustration of this uh, particular one. Let me consider an illustration. We can treat this as illustration or a simple problem, whatever way. Let us say that a particle is moving along a straight line, it is capital A. As a mass, that is not important what we are trying to do here. It is moving along a straight line, there are no external forces. Okay. Now, due to some reason, it explodes, it is something like a bomb or something, it explodes and it goes, it becomes two pieces, let us say. So, one of the pieces goes like this, the other piece goes like this, let us say. Right. Now, what can you say about the center of mass? And, uh, since external forces are 0, the velocity of center of mass remains constant, therefore, it has to move along, it has to move along the same straight line further. Where is going to be the, the center of mass? This has to be somewhere here, such that you can join, it has to be in a straight line, let us say. Okay. So, uh, if external forces are not there, then we can, if any such explosion happens, it can get split into um, y 2, it may be 3 or 4 or several particles, then we can say for sure that what is the direction of center of mass and uh, that will be same as the earlier one. Okay. Now, we will work out a, a simple problem, you can treat it as an illustration and uh, before that we will make few comments. So, when a system of particles is separated into uh, uh, sorry, a system of particles represented by the center of mass, we have the following scenario. So, the motion of the various parts is such that it is separated into center of mass and what about the motion of these particles? These particles b and c move with respect to the center of mass, I will just call this x center of mass. Let me repeat, forget about this portion what we have had. We have here now these two particle system B and C, which are moving. Now, the center of mass is somewhere here, it is located at this particular point. So, the motion of B and C can be studied in such a way that the, the linear motion of center of mass and the motion of B and C with respect to the center of mass. This is what you call it as the, the motion of various parts of a system is the technical language you use the word separated. That means, it is split, is separated, you can use or split, is split into one the motion of center of mass and 2 motion 
about the center of mass. About the center of mass. Please notice the words which are being used. The whole motion of this system is separated into motion of center of mass plus the motion about the center of mass. Okay? This is the advantage of using this. Now, we can, uh, we can ask various questions. What about the total kinetic energy of this system, this two particle system, whenever uh, or uh, what about the total kinetic energy of uh, um, the several particle systems relative to the center of mass, okay? that we will calculate. I will consider a simple example. We will consider some more uh, harder examples involving intricacies little later. And, uh, so, the question we have is what about what about the total kinetic energy what about the total kinetic energy of a two particle system what about the total kinetic energy of a two particle system relative to center of mass this is an important question now we will consider the situation i have two particles this m1 is the mass second one m2 and its velocity is v1 this velocity of this uh, is v2 with respect to a suitable coordinate system let us say that. then first thing is what is the velocity of center of mass velocity of center of mass is uh, we know this definition we have been using it again m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 i don't need this any longer again have the same situation as there are no external forces only this is a two particle system so as we had seen this problem yesterday the simplest one is a two particle system let us work it out for this what is the question we asked? It is we need to calculate the total kinetic energy of this system with respect to the center of mass, right? And so, velocity of m1, velocity of m1 with respect to center of mass. See, this is a notation you have to be very careful velocity of 1 with respect to center of mass, okay. So, this is velocity of the first particle with respect to the center of mass. No, it is like a relative velocity, it is a relative velocity, it is nothing but by definition v1 minus velocity of center of mass. Velocity of center of mass, we have the standard notation. Right. This we can calculate, this is nothing but v1 vector minus m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2. I can multiply on both sides, I will have sorry, uh, I, do, I do the simplification rather not multiplication by both sides v1 minus m1 v1 plus m2 v1 minus m2 v2 divided by I will do this calculation of the first particle second particle is simple right what are they have done is that multiplied this m1 plus m2 by v1 that is what m1 v1 plus m2 v1 and these two terms I will write as they are so these two terms will get cancelled I will have m2 into 
v 1 minus v 2 by m 1 plus m 2. This is the v 1 center of mass, velocity of the first particle relative to the center of mass. Okay. Now, you can write down what is the velocity of center of mass uh, for of the second particle, which I will write it here. Velocity of the center of mass relative to the uh, sorry, velocity of the second particle related to the center of mass. Okay. This again I will do the same thing. Uh, instead, I will write here V2 minus V center of mass, this is equal to V2 minus again I will do this m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 right so i know what i will get uh, v2 uh, v2 m2 is going to get cancelled with this i will have m1 v2 minus v1 this divided by m1 plus m2 this is the velocity of the second particle with respect to the center of mass right so you can see the symmetry there was velocity of the first particle with respect to center of mass consulted m2 and then v1 minus v2 here velocity of the second particle with respect to center of mass consults m1 here and then v2 minus v1 right and okay now what i need to do is um, <coughs> i need to calculate the kinetic energy of the kinetic energy of i will use a notation kinetic energy of the first particle relative to the center of mass this straight line just says where i am calculating this quantity kinetic energy of the first particle relative to the center of mass this will be by definition will be half m1 into the square of that m2 v12 incidentally what is this quantity the relative velocity of the first particle with respect to the second particle that's what we denote by v12 what is v12 the relative velocity of the first particle with respect to the second particle that is nothing but v1 minus v2 these are all fairly standard things similarly this would be what is this quantity the quantity here this will be v2 minus v1 these two are uh, magnitude wise same but they are in opposite directions and, okay that divided by m1 plus m2 whole square so i can do this calculation what i will get half of m1 then m2 squared then magnitude of v12 squared that divided by m1 plus m2 the whole square similarly i can calculate the kinetic energy of the second mass relative to the center of mass okay this is half of m2 m1 v2 1 by m1 plus m2 the whole squared this would be half of m2 squared sorry m2 m1 squared this will be since it is a magnitude i can write whichever way i want either i can write v1 comma 2 or v2 comma 1 divided by m1 plus m2 the whole squared okay now when I, I now i want to calculate total kinetic mass of the system i need some space but i can't erase there therefore so kinetic energy of the system of the system that is both the particles 
with respect to the center of mass z equal to I need to add this terms uh, it is very easy here half I have m 1 and m 2 I can take out common and then mod v 1 comma 2 whole squared here I will have an m 2 here I will have an additional m 1 coming here that divided by m 1 plus m 2 whole squared. So, one power will get cancelled I will simply have kinetic energy of the system with respect to the center of mass is half of m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2 times the relative velocity of one of them with respect to the other. This is a very important quantity. There is a very specific reason why I have chosen this particular illustration to be done. And you see that this particular quantity is what is known as reduced mass. Reduced mass of m 1 and m 2 this is uh, denoted by mu generally it is m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2. It has the dimensions of mass very clear because there is a m square here in the denominator m therefore, the reduced mass has dimensions of mass. So, therefore, we see that uh, the, the two particle system moves this two particle system moves as if it has a reduced mass and its value is given by m 1 multiplied by m 2 divided by m 1 plus 2. And what is the velocity with which this moves? This is the relative velocity with which it is moving and okay. Now, this is about the kinetic energy of system we will, we will make some comments about the center of mass little later. I will erase this, uh, this I will keep other expressions I can have. Sir, does it represent the total kinetic energy of the system? No. Remember, once you are uh, having the kinetic energy of this uh, of this particles m 1 and m 2, then what about the velocity of the center of mass? So, that I need to take into account. Therefore, total kinetic energy of the system is equal to half of mu times v relative whole squared plus we cannot afford to forget the center of mass that is somewhere sitting c m center of mass that would be what is the mass center of mass, mass of center of mass capital m m 1 plus m 2 then its velocity c m squared c m then I have to square this. Okay. So, therefore, I will have half of mu times v relative whole squared plus half of m 1 plus m 2 and we know what is the expression for center of mass m 1 is moving with the velocity v 1 and m 2 is moving with the velocity v 2. Therefore, velocity of the center of mass is this quantity and I want to calculate the total kinetic energy of this system. Okay, right. This is the total kinetic energy of the system. It looks little uh, causing a fear, but there is nothing. It is a very straightforward expression. Okay, I have ten minutes. Is cut pani Right. Now, uh, what is that we have done? The whole motion we are considering as if this the motion of center of mass and then the relative motion part. So, this is the kinetic energy of the relative motion part, this is the kinetic energy of the center of mass. Therefore, total energy should be this. Let us check up whether this is correct. What all things we need to do is substitute for uh, in this particular expression substitute for 
uh, we are relative and then add those things let us see what we get right we have the expressions and all here therefore i need not have this okay so i'm going to right hand i will call this as right hand side this is what i'm going to calculate here the right hand side expression is equal to half of reduced mass is m1 times m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into this is relative velocity is v1 minus v2 the whole square correct so this would be half of m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 multiplied by v1 square plus v2 squared minus 2 v1 dot v2 this dot is very important because these are two vectors there is a dot product involved when you take a square whereas here they become simply scalars okay plus oh sorry sorry this is one half of the expression other half is this expression is what i have written this expression i have to write so that i will write it as plus half of m1 plus m2 times the quantity over there in the denominator i will have m1 plus m2 the whole squared times i will have here m1 squared v1 squared plus m2 squared v2 squared plus 2 m1 m2 little bit of space adjustment on the board v1 dotted with v2 okay so one term will disappear and this i will oh sorry let me not do it here let me not do it here this will be plus half of this will disappear i will have 1 over m1 plus m2 whole squared this is uh, <coughs> and I will have here m1 squared v1 squared plus m2 squared v2 squared plus 2 m1 m2 v1 dot v2. Now, I can add these things take term by term I will see that now let us look at this term and then let us look at uh, so 2 is not there please because that is gone i will have half m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 then v1 dot v2 here i have again same m1 m2 times v1 dot v2 by m1 plus m2 therefore this term and this term they will cancel so remaining i need to add these two terms i will have here yes half of m1 v1 squared plus half of m2 v2 squared this is the total kinetic energy of the system so we had we have a two particle system which is moving with velocities v1 and v2 its total kinetic energy is this is the kinetic energy total if you are looking the same system with respect to the center of mass then we need then these two particles then the reduced mass will have a uh, kinetic energy so this two particle system has a total kinetic energy this much expression half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared the same thing can be viewed the center of man and the center of mass language in the following way what is it it says that the reduced mass of the system 
namely m1 and m2 it has a velocity that is v relative velocity therefore the energy corresponding to this is this much plus the center of mass center of mass always has this much it will also have kinetic energy you add these two things you will exactly get to be the same so you need to do a little bit of algebra in simplifying it i hope i can leave it so now we come to the uh, we will do little more problems later we have time 15 minutes side okay ah yeah now we will make some comments about uh, the center of mass how is the center of mass of a system defined center of mass of a system is defined as m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 now we invert it so i will have 1 by m is equal to 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 okay uh, the center of mass is also we call it as mu better i always use this symbol you know it if you have a fraction equal to sum of two fractions then what you can say from this mu is certainly less than or equal to m1 and also mu is certainly less than or equal to m2 okay uh, so the reduced mass is always less than or equal to mass of the each body let us write it here the reduced mass of a system is always less than or equal to the mass of each body equal to mass of each body you will find that this particular technique is uh, extensively used whenever we have uh, multi particles in particular the simplest uh, multi particle system is hydrogen atom where the nucleus consists of uh, a proton and uh, you have an electron this is simple two body system where we you where this problem is studied using this particular techniques in, uh, in the coming class we will discuss maybe one or two additional illustrations and then move further and we have to move on to other topics like torque angular momentum angular momentum conservation etc and i will stop at this stage